Brianna, and we are live on again tonight. Um, tonight we are actually going to work on learning how to sew with closed line rope. Um, and I'm going to give you lots of tips and tricks, tips, tips, tricks, and hacks that I have used as I did have done this before. I am just using a Walmart closed line rope. But a lot of these tips, tricks, and hacks can be used as you're sewing your jelly roll rug. So this is a um, thing that's kind of popular right now. So then some Walmart clothesline rope that you can experiment with and make some things with, with, the, um, with you know, while you're stitching away. So what you do is you open this up. This is only, this is the, the best bargain price. The eye line rope. I don't know about the dollar store too. You don't want something too hard, um, and too too hard there. But let me look at. Let me see what it's made out of real fast. Let me see if it says what it's made out of. Um, I think that this is a polyester, some type of polyester there. But some some rope is really stretchy and some is not. And I really like the Walmart clothesline rope. I have not found another type of rope that cheaper than the Walmart rope okay so this is what it looks like when you buy it you actually purchase it in the aisle where there are ironing boards um, there's um, it's the aisle in Walmart with ironing boards maybe irons are right there I, I can't remember but it's right in that section of Walmart it's by the ironing board so where they have ironing boards they have clothesline rope okay so I'm gonna open up this clothesline rope and show you guys what to do now, in my sewing machine, I have actually put a large spool of thread. So this is not something that I would um, use or fill thread or other expensive thread. I would just purchase some inexpensive thread to, um, to use for this project. And, um, and then I just have large spools of white thread laying around. So I'm once again putting my, my large spool into a ball jar. I do have an adapter for my sewing machine for a, a, you know, whatever, but I don't want to have to get it out. And I move this machine around and then I might break something. Now, I'm going to try to move the cameras closer, or maybe I'll move the sewing machine closer to the camera so you guys can see what's happening. Um, you definitely want to put on your sewing machine a denim needle or a jean needle. You could do it with any needle though. Um, I recommend a, gen a denim or a jean needle because you're going through rope, but this, this Walmart rope just, it's not that dense in there. I mean, it is, it is, it's a good rope. So you're also going to want to use an open toe sewing foot. So, oh, it looks like my iron has two red eyes that are flashing. <laughs> Look at that, you guys. Linda, oh, here, I'll put this over here for Instagram and Facebook, but Linda says, it looks like my iron has two red eyes that are flashing. It's on now, but I'll move that. I'll, I'll turn it around so we don't have to look at it, right? Let me move this other stuff down. All right. Um, so you want to use an open toe foot because you're going to use a zigzag stitch and, you know, you don't want to bust your a foot. So you want to use an open toe foot. You are going to use the zigzag stitch. Now, um, we are just going to... Um, let me see. Does has anybody else done? Yes, it was funny, Linda. You're right because <laughs> I can see that going on with the iron. Okay, so these are social tutorials where we have a little fun with each other and we visit with each other and we stay social um, and we just have fun. It's just a really fun time. If you guys want to share the videos, you guys can, but nothing's required to share to win or anything like that. It's always fun when we have a video that goes viral. Um, so it's fun to have a viral video. If you if you guys want to help me get a viral video, then sharing it's great. But don't worry about it anyways, because anybody will win the clothesline rope. Okay, so we're gonna just have a lot of fun. So what I am gonna first try to make is a coaster. So I'm gonna just make a small circle coaster, and I think that's a really good basic to start with. Thanks, Linda. You guys are so sweet. So I, and we're gonna just use the rope all by itself. You could cover the rope with fabric, but you don't have to. Um, I think that these are really pretty, but this might get a little dirty as a coaster maybe. 
I don't know. <laughs> if I'm drinking my Diet Coke, I might be able to see some stains on it, right? But if I'm drinking water, you won't be able to see stains. So maybe this should be my water coaster to help me to remember to drink water. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just roll this up just ever so slightly, the end of the rope, okay? And, um, and then what I'm going to do then is just go ahead and slip this inside my sewing machine and I'm gonna do some zigzag stitches on on it. So I'm going to change my sewing machine to a zigzag stitch. I just filled a bobbin with this same white thread that is rather inexpensive. Okay. Um, you cover them with fabric. Um, okay. Linda, uh, Linda Foster, how do you cover your rope with fabric? So let me know how you do that. Will you share with us? And you guys, what are other things that we can make with this? Does that make sense? Um, what are some other things we can make coasters, we can make bowls, we can make baskets, we can make plates, we could make rugs, we can do just about anything, okay? But this is a great way to start learning. So yes, oh, you can share a picture. Okay, yes, please share a picture. All right, so I'm gonna put this in my sewing machine. I'm just gonna start it out with a little circle right there. So let me bring that up closer to the, the cameras. And I'm going to just do a little zigzag stitch on there to start this off. So that's the same kind of thing that you would do with anything. All right. So we're going to just start this off. And I am actually, well, I'm going to use a, a scissor right here to just kind of hold that right, right in place as I put my foot down. Okay. So now it's there. I don't want to shove my finger in there too much. Oh, I didn't switch to the zigzag stitch. Sorry, guys. Okay, I'm stitching to a zigzag switch, stitch, and I'm going to set my stitch at about maybe four. My sewing machine says four. I don't know what your sewing machine says. I don't know if that's what that is. Okay, so we're going to just do some zigzag stitches to have this go back and forth, and I'm going to just secure it just right like that. Oh, I hit the cut button. You guys, I, I was cleaning my machine and I took a piece apart and it fell down inside my machine, the little cutter. Okay, so you can see that just that little bit of a zigzag has that now going, so it's holding in that circular shape. I can tighten this some more as I am doing this. So we are gonna make a just a clothes line from Walmart um, a coaster. So I'm going to lay this in here again, and I'm going to just zigzag on it another another direction. I can't really tell because it's white thread on white rope, but I'm going to just secure it again, and we're going to just bring that around. Let me keep that tight. Okay, there we go. And this is how we are going to start out our circle. So we're just starting out the rope in a circular method. Okay, so let me just trim more of those threads off. So you can see I've just started this out in a circular method. So you just zigzag just right there on it. Hi, Anne! Anna, it's so good to see you. Oh, thank you. And you finally got all of your orders. I'm so glad. She Anna lives in, in Canada and we mailed her orders without her first digit of her address. It was horrible. So we mailed her all new orders. So anyways, yeah, that was that was a big mistake that we did, copying and pasting the address. Okay, so now we are gonna go ahead and we are going to start zigzagging this as we are going to build this around and around and around. And that's the concept that you're doing with the Jelly Roll rug, okay? to keep this and we want this to stay as flat as can be because we just want a flat coaster. So you could make like a, a plate or maybe a plate type of thing that you're going to put on an end table or a dresser or something like that. And you can cover this in fabric. So in fact, I'll have Corey hand me some fabric that's over there, just some scraps that we can wrap fabric around this and then you guys can see what that looks like. But I want you guys to see it with um, with um, this part of it. Oh, <laughs> Corey, 
Corey handed me this green gingham fabric. Oh, sweetie, no, 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 not that fabric. I was thinking about the fabric over there. Where? <laughs> um, it's kind of behind that little box. I kind of shoved it over there. It's by uh, uh, a little bit further to the left, to the left, to the left, to the left. There's a song, right, that says that? Yes, that green looks perfect. Okay, it's a little bit brighter. Okay, so we'll go with this green instead of that green. It just looks brighter and happier. Okay, so I'm going to show you some how to cover it with fabric. But first, we're going to start with just building this circle. All right, so I'm going to turn the sewing machine around and I'm going to have you guys be able to have an extra close up look um, of the sewing machine and as I'm stitching this. So go, let me go ahead and show you. So strips, Anna, you do it with strips. Do you wind the strip around the rope or do you just cover the rope with say a strip before? So I'm curious how some of you guys use the technique to do this. So let's go ahead and turn this sewing machine around so you guys can all get a good look at how this works. Okay, we're not gonna dump over the, uh, let me get my foot and I'm coming around on the other side. Okay, so just one second. Also, we are going to be doing a live tomorrow. So I'm going to make sure all the sewing machines, you can see the farmhouse floral quilt. Um, we're going to do a live tomorrow on how to start layering to quilt your quilt. So if you're interested in learning how to layer a quilt, uh-oh, I think I forgot to switch this so that... It is, whoops, sorry. Okay, let me get these all just straight, the cameras. Um, so that we can, and we need a little more light over here. Let's put some more light so you guys can see a little bit better. I'm going to put this foot down here. Sorry for banging around. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. Where's my little circle? Okay, here's the circle that we've got that we're going to start growing. And I think I'm going to zoom you guys in on Facebook. And I didn't, I think I forgot to flip my screen around. Okay, I did. You guys, I'm sorry. I do not have a left-handed sewing machine. Okay, so that's what I have so far for it being started. I am now going to go like this. Um, is needs to reconnect. Okay, I am so sorry, you guys. But can anyone explain their process of how they cover the clothesline rope with their fabric. I would love to have us share different techniques of different ways. Did I unplug this? Good golly. Wait, let me see if they're just, oh, it got, the plug got loose. Okay, let it restart for just one moment. Sorry about this, guys. So there we go. And let me turn, Corey, there's a way for me to turn the YouTube around. Sorry guys. I hate to do this to you. I'll get better at this. Um, this is my husband's iPad because my iPad memory is full. Isn't that crazy? Okay, that gives you a better shot of the sign machine. Let's see Instagram. Let's put you right there and Facebook. We're right there. Okay, let's see people's comments. You can see them. Looks like a fiddlehead. <laughs> um, yes! My mom would like to know what type of machine you're using. It is a Husqvarna sewing machine, and it's just the kind of sewing machine that I first started with. Um, okay, so there we go. Here's our little start to the sewing machine right here. You know, I'm gonna do one more thing and just tip this a little bit upright for Instagram. Can you find something gentle to put underneath there, honey? Okay, so let's go ahead and start this zigzag stitch. Here we go. And I'm just going to go back and forth on this. I'm not going to do a very tight stitch. I've got some width to it and length to it. It does not have to be a crazy tight stitch. So as I'm feeding this in here, I'm just rolling it around and around and letting that feed in there. That's the same type of thing. So you can make your jelly roll rug um, as a circle. You can make your jelly roll rug as a um, as a uh, oval. Oops, that's popping out just right there. 
as an oval. You can make your jelly roll rug a square. So you could, so with us, with the clothesline rope, you can see here, I'm trying to keep everything as flat as I possibly can. And I'm just running this through and I can see I might have missed a thing right there, but I'm keeping that. Let me make sure my thread's going good. Whoop. Okay, so I can see some place I'm not connected. Let me do needle down real fast and come back up. And we're gonna go back. I'm gonna show you how to fix that because that this will happen to you too. Okay, so I am just going to keep this going and growing. And you can see that we can just make this grow. We want to keep this as flat as we can on the base of the sewing machine because we are making um, just a nice flat coaster. Oh my goodness. Okay, no, we do not want a phone call right now. Sorry, Facebook, I just got, can I make it closer? You bet. Let me try to zoom that in more for you guys on Facebook. And let me move the machine back for you guys. Whoops, I'm breaking my machine, moving it around. Okay, that might be better. Let me move this down. Okay, great. I think that's a better shot there. So let me go ahead and keep this growing for you. So you can see, um, I'm just continuing to zigzag this. I think I might make my zigzag just a little bit bigger um, or wider. I'm gonna go to a four right now. For the Jelly Roll rug, you're using a five stitch. You're using a stitch that's as wide as a five. And I think I probably should have started out with a four for this coaster. And I will show you what I mean by that. But you're gonna test out your own machine and figure out what settings are good for you. And I'm just letting that gently feed in. And I can see a few vulnerabilities that I've done, but I'm gonna get this to be a size of a coaster. And then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna fix places where I have little holes. And I will show you how to do that because you will invariably have little holes. And I think I'm having several because I'm not sitting very directly on my sewing machine. I'm doing this at an angle, at a funky little angle. Okay, so you can see how that's going. Uh, I'm gonna do one more time around, and then I am going to fix my little things. I sure hope it's like working. It is some places. Okay, there we go. I should practice stitching from an angle like this. Well, you would think I do practice with all the lives, don't you think? Wider four is good. Okay, thank you, Anne, Anna. Thank you, I think you're right. Okay, all right, here we go. We're gonna just make that catch and I will re-catch those other spaces because this happens to me, especially sometimes when I'm making a bowl and especially when I'm using the same color thread with the same color of the rope or whatever fabric I'm working with. So um, if the fabric has a print to it, you can kind of see when you're not catching quite right. I think I can kind of feel a little bit better about um, how to get this to catch better from the angle that I'm viewing it at. Okay, so let's just stop right there. And I'm going to trim off this rope right here. Now we can use some fabric tack to go ahead and make that hole so that it doesn't um, unravel for us. But I'm gonna just feed it back around. I'm gonna fold this back, this little raw edge of the rope. Cause remember, rope frays. I'm gonna feed that in there and we're gonna get that to add right into it, okay? And I folded that little end back. The other thing that I've done with some rope bowls that I have made is I've used just like a bit of vinyl um, or other things to make it. Okay, so this has some flaws to work on here. But you can see, okay, so here we are. There is our coaster, our, our little coaster right there. Um, so you can see. 
So, okay, you guys, um, now, now what we have here is we have some holes. Do you see the holes? This is really good for you to see. Okay, there's like a few holes here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take that little hole right there, because invariably, you're gonna hit a hole and you need to patch it. But all you do to patch it, and I've got a, a little bit of a weakness right there that I'd like to secure up. So what I'm going to do is I'm gonna, re, I'm gonna find this, okay? And I'm going to lay this down right there under my needle. I'm gonna put it right there where I know it needs to be secured. And I'm just gonna zigzag stitch just right over that. Okay, here we go. And I'm gonna zigzag stitch just right over that. Let's see if we fix that one. I see another spot where I should fix it, but I'm gonna take this off. Okay, let's go ahead and trim off those threads. So that's secure. But now this center part needs to be secured. So you can see my fingers coming through that, all right? So what we're gonna wanna do is I'm gonna wanna go from here all the way around and secure this one little ring right there, okay? And this will happen also on your jelly roll rug, if you're making a jelly roll rug, is you'll have little spots that don't quite catch and you'll look away or, you know, something like that. So I'm gonna go ahead and secure this one but you just go right over it. Don't stress about it. Just go right over it and start building it again. All right, and just build it and build it out and that will be just fine. So let's go ahead and check this out again. All right, so now what we don't want to have happen is we don't want this to curl. I think I could fix another thing right over there, a few other things. Okay, but we don't want this to curl. With your jelly roll rug or with any type of rope project or whatever you're working on, afterwards you press it, okay? And you give it a good press so that there's no curling to it or anything like that. But you can see that's pretty doggone flat. I don't know about you guys, but that's pretty doggone flat. I will secure this and trim off these extra little fibers here. And you guys, I, I didn't know, I didn't have a link for YouTube. I don't have a link for you guys at on Facebook. But if you guys want to, once I write the tips. Um, I don't know. You can write anything about uh, clothesline, rope, wall art. Didi, no, you don't know. Um, you, um, say your big rug um, at the end of it, um, like I do it at the end of the project. Does that make sense? So anyways, um, okay, so let's go ahead and redo this eventually have. So say we wanted to have an elongated type of of shape to it. You would start out with your shape like, does anybody have any input on dyeing polyester rope? I've never tried it before. The thickness of the rope. Okay, let me see here. Here's my finger. How can I tell you? Oh, the thickness. How about, I've got a mat right here. Let's measure it. The, okay, if I lay this down on my rotary mat, it's about a quarter of an inch thick, but I don't know if that helps. Oh, ca Canadian tire. So Linda suggests a Canadian tire. Corey, do you have any suggestions? No, okay, so it's a, about a quarter of an inch in diameter. Um, yeah, di diameter. Okay, so if we want another shape, we're gonna do that. But I am going to do a circle bowl and I'm gonna show you how to do that one. So once again, we're going, and I, I started with a fresh rope because I kind of want the whole rope to make the bowl. So I have a good size bowl, okay? So I'm going to start this out once again and I'm gonna roll this rope. It's made in China. Oh, it's made in China, Corey says. Hey, we might get, it might become more expensive soon. You never know. You know what, you guys, with all the tariffs and everything, um, fabric might become extremely expensive because most of our fabric comes from China, Korea, 
I mean, if you look on the bolt of your fabric, our fabrics are made. They're maybe designed in the U.S. or in other countries, but the cheapest places, I'm sorry, my little circle came apart. The cheapest places to have fabric, like our, our quilting fabrics made, is China, Taiwan, Vietnam, not Vietnam, Korea, um, all of those kind of places. Okay, once again, I'm just going to do a zigzag stitch over my beginning of the circle right there. Okay, I'm gonna actually backspace and I'm gonna turn it, I'm gonna tilt it a little bit another direction. And let's see if I can torque it maybe another way. Just, I'm going just forward and I'm going straight across the circle, okay? Okay, now we're gonna see if this is good. Okay, let's pull this back out. Let's trim that thread. Okay, so that looks like a pretty good circle start. So I just zigzagged straight across on my, on my circle. Just straight across is what I'm doing, all right? Now I'm going to start zigzagging when these two ropes come together. The tube, I'm sorry. I think I can only do so much bandwidth especially when my oldest son is home and they're streaming well who knows what they're all streaming probably netflix and who knows what okay i'm gonna go ahead and keep building this out all right and then i'll show you as soon as i get a significant build out if i don't catch something i'm going to ignore it for right now okay because i'm gonna just work on shaping this bowl Okay, I'm going to try to go a little faster. So let's see, we'll like speed up the video, right? Okay, let's keep it going. I feel like I got a knot or something in there. I did put a denim needle in my sewing machine um, just cause I wanted to. I think you could probably do this with a universal needle. This is so funky doing it at an angle and not straight on, but I don't want my head to be in front of the cameras. So we actually have three different, um, two different iPads and one iPhone streaming this to social media. So all of you guys have a slightly different angle. Um, anyways, um, okay, wait, I'm a little off right back here. So I'm gonna back up, cause look, I kind of went consistently off there for a while. I'm not gonna worry about trimming my threads. I'm gonna just go back over and catch that better. So, and I would use a more inexpensive thread um, to do this, cause you're gonna go through lots of thread. Okay, so now let me go ahead and get this a little bit bigger and then I'm gonna start shaping it to become a bowl. And everybody's shape is going to be unique and different, okay? You can see on my left side, on the outer side of the sewing machine, I'm putting my growth here. So I'm not growing inside the neck of the sewing machine, all right? So that is important, whether you're making the jelly roll rug or any of those, I mean, especially the bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this growing just a little bit more. And we're gonna grow and grow and grow. I sure hope I'm catching it well. Come on, that one I think I'm off. Okay, so let's go ahead and take this out for one quick second, because I wanna see where I'm at. I think I just have a hole right there. Well, maybe one over there. It's hard to do from this angle, you guys. You can get rope in the pool area. So Canadian tire, you can get rope in the pool area. Oh, you get cotton rope. Gosh, darn it. I wanna find cotton rope because you can dye the cotton rope. Okay, I'm gonna fix my little holes because now I'm gonna start building this out. Okay, so let me bring that back up. I am keeping my needle down. Okay, there's one right here. I'm gonna just fix this one right here and we're not gonna get too picky about this, all right? So let me just fix this one little segment right here. Okay, so I think that's pretty well fixed. I could also do a little, oh, I, I used the cutter thread and my cutter thread's not working too well. 
Okay, so that's pretty good. We're gonna let that be. I am gonna now start shaping this out. So let's count real quickly, if we can, how many rotations I did to, to then start building out my bowl. Now, every single bowl is unique and you're gonna have your own fingerprint for your own bowl. Okay, so I am one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So let's just count on ten rings out, okay? And then I'm going to start shaping the bowl at 10 rings out. So in order to shape the bowl, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start lifting this up so it's stitching at a different angle. All right, so we're going to lift this up. So that's why when you make everything else, you need it to be really flat. But you're going to see by lifting it up, I'm going to get a bowl. So, and we're gonna just keep it at an angle. Everybody is going to have their own unique thing. Can everybody see this? Can you guys see this okay? I feel so bad, it's so hard. Is this everything going good? Okay, let me see what everyone else is saying. Wow, I feel like Rip Van Winkle sometimes. Everything suddenly costs so much more than what I'm used to, I agree. It's really unusual, isn't it? Okay, so let me go ahead and keep building. So now I'm building the bowl, or what could this be, like a chaser? I don't know. What other things can you make with this technique? Okay, I'm not catching this very well. I've, I'm gonna try to put my head in there a little bit more so I can see my zigzag stitch a little bit better. I hope I'm not in the way of the cameras. I, so far I'm not, but I need to be able to see that where it's joining a little better. Okay. So you can see now it's starting to have a shape to it. I wish I could find my little bowl that I have. There we go. Um, because I just took some vinyl. Um, in fact, I've got vinyl just right here and I will show you what I did. Um, is when you finish the bowl, I will grab that out. I've actually got leather too, which is a fun little touch. Oh my gosh, I'm so not catching this quite the way I want to. Okay, there's gotta be a better way to do this. Am I, am I in the video? I'm a little bit in the video, but I can see this better, okay? Because you can see I've got some holes in here. But this is really an odd angle. I'm standing up at the sewing machine, at the table, but I'm leaning over the table. I'm gonna trim this thread. It's kind of jumping over, catching it. Okay, let's see if I'm going to improve on my stitching as I'm getting closer. So what we're doing is we're just building this out so it is more, and I'm gonna pull up my foot just a little bit. It was starting to catch on the rope or squeeze the rope through that and you just keep if you don't catch it it's no big deal you just go back over and do it so just don't don't feel like you're a failure or anything you just have to really figure it out and learn it and that's why I thought that this would be kind of a fun thing to do oh placemats great idea Bowls and baskets with handles, exactly. Um, a, oh, a trivet, a hot pet trivet. Corey came up with that idea. I'm so grateful for my creative husband <laughs> that's an attorney that's that comes home and deals with, with me doing my sweet little things. He's so sweet, what a nice man. Oh, I'm so happy to have that man. I can't even tell you. Anyways, I'm sorry. I'm really sorry to talk like that, but we had some really good news today. I can't really share it. It's kind of personal, but we had some really good news. I'm just so, can't tell you how happy I feel or just good. You know what I mean? Don't you sometimes go through like long-term um, burdens and then some, all of a sudden something gets lifted and you're like, wow. Oh, I feel lighter, but you know what? I'm so proud of myself. That one lasted for years and I was so tough and smart and endured it. 
and it's all the kind of things that we need to do as we're building our bowls. <laughs> we just need to stay strong, right ladies? And any gents, we uh, mainly our, our population in our group is women, but you just gotta stay strong and, and be steady and consistent. Steady and consistent in life and strong and we need to be there for each other. And I'll tell you what, quilting was always my safe space. And all of you guys were always my safe space. And life is too hard to make it difficult, more difficult than it needs to be. So, okay, you guys, if you want to join the Everyone Can Quilt group, you can follow me on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube. I only need a few more followers and I can go back to monetizing my um, videos on YouTube. I need like 25 more followers. I'm so excited. YouTube changed their rules. You have to have a, a minimum of a thousand followers. So I'm at 975. I've been trying to grow my YouTube channel more consistently. I've done videos on YouTube, but most of my views are from years and years ago. Um, but I sure have posted a lot of videos lately. Okay, so here we go. The videos, um, I do live on Instagram, but the videos do not save on Instagram. They go away after 24 hours. So if you want to re-watch any videos, you need to do that on YouTube or Facebook. They save forever on YouTube and Facebook. And I need to upload more of the Facebook videos to YouTube because sometimes I'm not able to stream them both at the same time. Okay, so, okay, I'm gonna take this off the machine. You can see, we've got a bowl. You have a joining foot. Dee Dee, what a great idea. A joining foot, okay. What ideas did you guys come up with? Corey, what comments were they saying? Well, I was watching the sewing machine trying to like get my stitches. Okay, do you see this? Do you see how it's shaped like a bowl? Look at that. Okay, I know it's little, it's a little bowl, but you just keep growing and growing and building it. And it's really kind of relaxing. I'm sorry, but you'll really get your zigzag stitch down. And hopefully I will Maybe soon. A hot mat, put a few drops, drops of essential oil. <gasps> oh my gosh, what a great idea. Some essential oils on a hot mat, you guys. And in your little, in your, in your hot mat. Oh my gosh, you guys are brilliant. What other ideas did you get? Oh, someone just subscribed to uh, YouTube. So I have 979 followers. I love you guys. You guys are just darling. <laughs> But yes, it's a bowl. It's a small bowl, but it's a bowl. I am going to grab some leather. You guys, I have so many things I want to do with my life. I hope I live to be 104 so we can keep sewing and just make as many things as we possibly can make. I have rounded up to 105. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go grab real fast the, hold on for just a minute. I'm going to go grab real fast my leather and my vinyl. I'm going to show you this, okay? Because I want to show you how to accent your bowl. Okay, so everybody hold on. Remember, this is just an inexpensive rope. Okay, oh my gosh. I can't wait to show you this. Okay, you guys, I have to show you something that I hoard. Okay, it's in one of these bins behind the thing. And we're going to play with some more of this stuff. I'm going to bring you guys up and unzoom you a little bit okay so let me show you guys what i have in this bin um i think you guys can kind of see it on the different cameras okay in this bin oh Corey's looking in the bin <laughs> he wants to see what i'm hoarding look you guys here's my bin okay let me move that okay this is some mesh okay sorry this goes in the bottom of a bag to make a a bag like firm and steady but you guys this is just uh, inexpensive vinyl from like Walmart or just anywhere. Okay, this is not real leather, but it's awesome. This is all real leather. Um, see this peach leather? Ooh, Corey's checking out yeah, the real leather. Ooh, Corey wants to know if I've got his deer eyes. Oh, honey, the deer eyed handles would the deer hide handles would be really beautiful. But look at this leather. Look at this leather. Isn't that gorgeous? This is a real leather, and it's um. Anyways, okay, let me keep showing you. This is just a basic vinyl. You guys, you should see. Is, am I using the right words? Is this a vinyl? 
this is a vinyl. Look at how beautiful that is. So you can make little vinyl handles like that. Okay, this is a great vinyl. I think you guys saw this already. I think I might use that for the handles. Look at this leather. Okay, we gotta play with some of the stuff. Look at this black leather. We're gonna make more things, you guys. I have such an agenda. Look at this chocolate brown leather. Oh my gosh, we are gonna have so much fun. Oh, here's some deer hides. Look, Corey, but that one's kind of, what color would you call that deer hide? Buckskin. Yeah, this is buckskin. Okay, so Corey, should we make a handle with your handle. buck stand? <laughs> Corey, Corey went hunting when he was a kid. This is more leather. Okay, anyways, you can just stash things or take things apart. Say you're going to a... Also, it's hard to think of all the words while you're sitting here and you're on live. Okay, we're going to use this right here. So you can see this is just a basic leather. I can easily cut this. Um, you know, I'm going to just do it with the ginger scissors. I'm sorry. No, I can cut it with my rotary cutter. I, you know what? Let, I'm going to just do it so you guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, let's take this small segment right here. Okay, and I'm going to just cut this. I don't want to have to move the cameras again. So I'm using my ginger scissors. Someone won a pair of ginger scissors the other day. And why don't we make that a little bit more narrow? like this. This leather I actually bought in Hawaii when we were visiting Hawaii one time. And I'm going to cut this in half. So I'm going to fold it. I'm sorry, I wasn't really in the camera. Oh, let me move this down. Sorry, Facebook. Okay, so I'm going to fold. I just cut the leather in a strip like that. I'm going to fold this over like this. And this is real leather, but you can use um, just vinyl, just basic vinyl. And we're going to do this as our little handles on the bowl, okay? Which our bowl is really small right now. So, but I'm going to take this. I'm going to make my bowl grow bigger, all right? Because I want a bigger bowl. I don't know. Um, but what I'm going to do is just put a little handle on there. Can each camera see that? Yes. And we're gonna just stitch that handle on the bowl, okay? And you can put the other one on the other side, and it can actually cover the end of your, the end of your whatever. So here's putting like a vinyl or a leather touch to your rope bowl or whatever else that you want to do. Oh, how do you subscribe to me on YouTube? You go to YouTube.com, and you guys, it's really dumb, but. It's Stitches Quilting Living is the name of my channel. So you guys are so sweet. I, Corey, can you put a link, honey, in the comments? Okay, so th wouldn't that be great? But you can also make handles, say, with some of your rope. So you can just leave a gap there. Do you see how you just put a gap there? And then just jump from there over. And then you've got a little rope handle. And maybe do several times. And already into your bowl too. Does that make sense? So those are, so what other tips and tricks? Can you see how um, these kind of tips and tricks will help you if you're wanting to do something as, as large as a jelly roll rug, okay? Now let's talk real quickly about how to cover your um, fabric in your, in your bowls. Okay, so has anybody made coat, um, Yes, so you like the rope handle. I like the rope handle too. But you guys, you can only imagine that there's just an amazing amount of things that you can do. So say you're making a platter or you're making a charger that goes underneath a regular uh, plate. Um, you can have, you know, any kind of handles. What other gift ideas can we make? Linda, your uncle lived to 202? Are you kidding me? How is that possible? <laughs> Oh my gosh. My father-in-law is um, 98 right now. Oh, copy the link up there, up at the very tip top. This is your page, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that that'll work. <laughs> Anyways, that's not my normal handle, but that's okay. Um, and then just copy it into the comments, honey. Um, anyways, um, okay, so we can make tons of other things. Um, oh, you guys are so sweet to me. I just love you guys. <laughs> oh, 101. Oh, Linda. <laughs> Linda says her uncle lived to be 101, not 202. 
<laughs> oh, I'm giggling too, Dee Dee. <laughs> or Linda. <laughs> we were off a, a digit of 100. Okay. See, we get to have fun during our social tutorials. Okay, that's uh, that's a way that you can, I think, get to me on YouTube. Corey, will you click that link and see if that works? Anyways. <laughs> Okay, so, all right, so here's some different ideas. What are some other tips and tricks that you guys can offer to each other as you are building, say, a jelly roll rug or something really large? Um, yes, that should be it. Um, so, um, so one thing when you're doing the jelly roll rug, you want that to be flat as can be. And as that rug gets larger and larger out this space over here, you have to put... I put some bolts of fabric right here to even out the space between my sewing machine and the rug. And I'm trying to keep the rug flat because you can see by just changing the angle at a single degree, you're going to end up with a bowl and not something flat. Okay, does that make sense? Amy says her grandma's turning 104 in two weeks. Oh, that is so cute. I love it, Amy. That's so fun. You guys, I just love, I love that kind of stuff. Oh my gosh, I just, I feel like I want to make her something, but you know, <laughs> I have a lot of things that we're making, right? Oh my gosh. Okay, but we do need to, um, we need to all like submit some blocks to, and have you guys send blocks in and make like a community quilt. Anyways, we'll do something sometime. Okay, so here's the bowl right here. So for the jelly roll rug, it's important you keep that rug flat. Now the jelly roll rug is pretty much your jelly roll, which is 2.5 inches, and then batting inside the jelly roll, okay? So you're using either 100% cotton batting, a thin batting, or an 80-20 batting, okay? So don't you have a lot of extra batting laying around? I'm sure you do, I do, because I've got like edges cut off of quilts because I was, you know, had it bigger. So I have got lots of extra strips and on my rug, I didn't use the cotton batting because I really wanted to repurpose my 80-20 extra batting because I've just got so many junky strips laying around. So, um, so you're wrapping your jelly roll around batting and that is what's making the thickness there. Okay, so let me grab the jelly roll for a second, Roz. So instead of buying expensive rope because the jelly roll rug let me show you this. The jelly roll rug is, oh, here it is. The jelly roll rug you could make with rope, okay? But why spend all that money on rope when you can actually just use scraps of fabric that you have that, I mean, everybody knows they're 2.5 inch strips because that's the, the width of a jelly roll or a roly poly. So, and then you just have batting that's inside there. So do you understand how you can take something and you don't have to use batting or you don't have to use a roly-poly just get your scraps together okay and then put some batting you know in there and fold it shut it's almost like a bias tape but of course it's not cut on the bias does that make sense and then you're going to use stuff that you have that's laying around that you might not want to throw away do you know what I mean into something like this does that make sense Normally the jelly roll rugs are with all the blue fabrics together, all the yellow fabrics together, all the red together. I did mine in a scrappy way. And this is an elongated rug. Oh, okay. I was getting another phone call there. Sorry guys, I need to put my, uh, my devices on do not disturb. Okay, so does that help? What else can we make? So what else can we make when we're doing this? I think these are a lot of fun. And if you're just beginning stitching and sewing and experimenting with things, there's a lot of things that we can make um, as we can make coasters. So let's go ahead and I'm going to um, put some um, fabric around the, oh, I'm at 989 on YouTube. Is that what you guys are saying? Oh my gosh, I love you guys. You guys are so sweet. It'll just give me another income stream of having, you know, to be able to monetize my videos. So I'm going to take this little bit of fabric and we're gonna wrap it around the rope, okay? So, um, let me cut this real fast. Oh, here we go. 
Let me lay this down. And this is just like a green polka dot. Who's it from? It's a Swiss dot. It's a basic fabric. Okay, I'm gonna grab a ruler. I'm gonna clean off my edge, but you could take any kind of scraps. Gosh darn it, I wonder where my rotary blade is. Holy moly. I've had so many projects go on. Okay, whoops, there goes the sewing machine. Stop. Okay, that's okay, we can take that off. You guys can see my feet there. Okay, I'm going to just cut this strip like this. All right, and so I've got a, about a one inch, one and a half inch strip. I'm going to cut off the um, fabrics right here, this excess. And we're going to start making something. And all we're gonna do is we're gonna just wrap this fabric around it. Okay, so let's see here. Um, how wide um, do you cut? The, the batting is the same width as the, um, the jelly rolls. Okay, so I'm gonna fold this over here. So it's 2.5 inches. So your batting is just the same width. But you, but you know what, yeah. Okay, so here we go. So I'm gonna just cover this rope and I'm gonna cover it at an angle with just strips here. And we're not gonna worry about how good it looks. It's just gonna be a scrappy little thing, but I'm going to wrap this around it. How else do you guys cover your fabric? I mean, you could stitch it, but can you see if you just cover your fabric like this, how you can make something that's just really inexpensive rope into something else? Okay, so, and then you could start building out whatever you're going to make with this, with any type of scrap. You could change your scraps. You can keep all the same scrap. You can use whatever you want. Um, you know, when you're dealing with the flat batting, you're actually sewing it. I mean, but this we wouldn't want to stitch closed. I don't know. I mean, what do you guys think? I mean, that could be the inside of it, but that would be a lot of finagling um, with that. You rip fabric and the, so it looks more shabby. I agree. Rip that fabric. That's a great idea. I like it because it has more fibers on it and it looks more shabby chic. Yep, I totally agree with you. So, but that should help um, give you guys some ideas for that. So what we can do is I really wanted to go through the basics with a clothesline rope. So we started, we made a coaster and we, I started a bowl. I'm gonna finish my bowl, cause I don't know, I just want to. I'm gonna make it the length of this rope that came. You can piece rope together and just kind of piece it with a zigzag stitch together. So remember, you can do that too and make it as big and as, as whatever you want, all right? But let's go ahead and let's get down to, um, but I think that these are some good basic concepts that help you think about making other things that you have going on. So anyways, but this is the basic of how to make a rope bowl and how to make, a, say, a platter or a coaster or whatever you might have. Now we've got to decide who is winning here. So on you, on Instagram, let me see who's on there. Um, let's have Maha. M-I-Q, M-A-H-A-M-I-Q, win on Instagram. So I'm going to send you a, a rope bowl, I mean, a, a thing of rope from Walmart. And let's get some people that are winning from YouTube. Let me look at that. I'm so sorry it went off and on. Oh, you guys, I'm so sorry. So let's get two people on YouTube. Um, well, we kind of have the same people. So Olive... Goheen, I might not be able to see all the, the comments, and J.K. Barnes wins again tonight on YouTube. And, okay, great. Uh, so you guys need to send me your addresses and send me what you won. That's really helpful, and I'm going to write these down. And let's look on, um, um, okay, let's go ahead, and I like it when Corey chooses. I hate to choose. So I'm going to end the video on YouTube and on Instagram. I hope you guys learned maybe a little something and that it was fun. And I'm going to re-upload this video on YouTube so you've got a better video that isn't going in.